Stanislaus River is a tributary to the San Joaquin River. Uh, the San Joaquin River is in the Central Valley of California and at the southern extent of the range of uh, Chinook salmon. Chinook salmon are an anadromous species. They're born in freshwater. They turn into smolts and migrate out to the ocean where they can rear several years and then migrate back to freshwater. They're similparous, meaning they spawn um, only one time and then they die. The goals for management of salmon on the Stanislaus River are to support a healthy, naturally producing population of Chinook salmon. When you go up to Knights Ferry and you stand there at the bridge over the Stanislaus River there and see how crowded that facility is in the wintertime for people trying to capture a look at the salmon that are moving upstream, it's very impressive. Those types of exposures to the public uh, drive home the importance of salmon and salmon management on rivers to make sure that we don't lose that quality and that asset that we have that makes this area a great place not only to live but a great place to visit. Early on in the early 1990s, the district saw what was coming ahead for fisheries management in California, environmental concerns and issues, and began a program way back then to start studying uh, the resources of this basin, specifically related to fisheries, fisheries populations, and how they may be changed or impacted uh, as time goes forward. In 2003, the district started using a fish counting weir as part of their program to monitor fish in the Stanislaus River. A weir is similar to a fence structure across the river. It's a floating fence, so to say, uh, that has generally one or two openings that direct fish. In those openings, we have devices to capture images of the fish as they migrate through. And that provides accurate information on uh, when fish pass through the weir and exactly what time. And then we can combine that with the environmental conditions um, that day or several days preceding to see what environmental conditions promote a lot of fish passage or not a lot. Throughout the season, we'll see spikes or peaks in the number of fish passing through the weir. So we conducted this study to try to determine what might be driving those bursts in fish movement past the weir. This study was conducted to look at the influence of various environmental factors on the migration of adult Chinook salmon. We looked at dissolved oxygen, water temperature, and moon illumination. We also looked at several management actions. Managers can make several kinds of adjustments or changes to the river to try to improve conditions for fish. We examined how salmon migration could be stimulated by two of those actions, fall pulse flows and the installation of a rock barrier. Pulse flows are relatively short bursts in reservoir releases uh, where we increase the flows for a brief period of time, typically to cue fish migration. Pulse flows are intended to mimic natural events, such as runoff events or snowmelt. Pulse flows were implemented in 1992, and um, they typically occur in mid to late October, and they've done so every year since then. In 2009, fall pulse flows effectively doubled in terms of duration and magnitude. This means that since 2009, a lot more water has been released for fish migration purposes, and we wanted to study how salmon were actually responding to those flows. In almost 25 years of providing these pulse flows every fall, there really hasn't been any formal evaluation of the response to those pulse flows. We analyzed 12 years of weir monitoring data to put in context the influence of pulse flows relative to other factors that influence the migration of adult Chinook salmon in the Stanislaus River. Out of the 12 years, we had 11 complete seasons of data. There were two major findings on the pulse flows. First, we found that the pulse flows could produce a spike in fish movement right away. But we also found that this didn't last very long and was only significant in two out of the 11 years of study. We also found that flows higher than 700 cubic feet per second, or CFS, didn't stimulate any additional migratory activity. Our work suggests that 700 CFS is the optimal amount of water to release to achieve a response in salmon movement. 
The second management action we looked at was the installation of the head of Old River Barrier. The head of Old River Barrier is typically installed in the spring and fall and it serves to divert more water into the San Joaquin River. It's mainly done to improve water quality conditions um, downstream in the San Joaquin River um, around the city of Stockton. We found that when it was installed, the head of Old River Barrier was effective in increasing the number of salmon that passed through the weir. This finding suggests that there are ways to benefit fish without releasing more water, which is helpful during a drought. This means that we could save water and release it to benefit fish later or keep it in the reservoir so the water stays cool enough for fish. Our study produced several recommendations for managers. If pulse flows are continued, um, we suggest that they are varied in terms of size and timing um, to better evaluate um, what works for fish and what doesn't. We also recommend that pulse flows better mimic the natural variation in water supply or seasonal variation, which includes, at least in the fall, short bursts of water rather than large extended blocks. There's a common saying that you can't manage what you don't know without knowledge. You can't make good decisions on the river. So investing in science and advancing that technology has been very important in the district to do just that. For everyone in California, the last five years of drought we have had has put us into a recalibration of how we're going to manage resources going forward. So uh, understanding uh, and putting together programs ahead of time that help us when these events come to be better prepared, to share the resources, to manage the resources for both agriculture, fisheries, the communities, to get the most value out of that is very important. Given a limited water supply and the severity of the recent drought and the prospect of future droughts, I think it's important that we share the results and use this study to inform future adaptive management of pulse flows on the Stanislaus River. The results of the study are published in the North American Journal of Fisheries Management. To our knowledge, this is the first time that the relationships between fall pulse flows, environmental factors, and Chinook salmon migration has been formally studied in California's Central Valley. We feel our approach could be used in different rivers or examining other difficult resource questions in the future. One particular example on the Stanislaus River is examining how steelhead migration patterns are affected by environmental factors and management actions. With a limited water supply, it's important that we're mindful of how best to use our water resources. So having a clear understanding of how much water is needed for our fisheries resources and when is key to an overall strategy for managing water in the Stanislaus River Basin. Thank you.